is data scientist still the sexiest job of 21st century? That's exactly what we're going to find out today. You might have read that article by Harvard Business Review and written in October 2012, where they claim that data scientists, the sexiest job of 21st century. Yes. And following that article, there was a lot of hype around the data science job family. And just last week on July 15, 2022, they did a follow up to that article. And the title of the article is, Is Data Scientist Still the Sexiest Job of the 21st Century? Believe it or not, I actually have a list of ideas of topics that I wanna do for YouTube videos. And this is one of the topics that has been in my idea list, but I haven't had a chance to record this. But as soon as I saw this article, I got immediate inspiration to actually record this video. So basically in 2012 article, they basically called it the sexy. I think, honestly, there's no job that is sexy. I think. That is just the headline that they wanted to grab attention and it obviously grabbed a lot of people's attention, a lot of people who wanted to get into the tech industry and they saw data scientists being so hyped up. Um, it attracted a lot of new aspirants who wanted to be data scientists. And as a result of that, the industry has evolved over the years. They saw that how much um, hype the initial article that they wrote got. So they wanted to address it and say if it is still sexy. There are four major points that the article highlights in respect to the data science job family. Number one is they're talking about how data science is now better institutionalized because there are so much educational programs around it. And that is 100% true because there are so many uh, degrees, boot camps, uh, courses, online courses that are available on the topic of data science, as well as YouTube channels that are talking about data science. So they are saying like, the job family is a lot more established than it was 10 years ago. Uh, universities, pretty much every university now offer a data science degree program, which is amazing because it sh just shows you how over just the, over the last 10 years, how the job family has evolved and the recognition that it has received from educational institutes as well as the industry. The second point they talk about is that in, in the 2012 article, they wrote that data scientist job family analysis based off of the fact that it was more end-to-end -end full stack data scientist project life data science project life cycle where you start from conceptualizing to use case to interfacing with business and technology stakeholders developing algorithms deploying it into production so starting from the problem to deploying it to the production now they're saying that the job family has evolved into various roles, including data engineering, machine learning engineering, AI engineer, um, analytics, and much, much more. So the job family in itself has grown much, much bigger. And the third point, they talk about how the technologies that data scientists use keep on evolving and they are changing and that makes the job job a little bit harder for people who are currently working in the data science field because they have to keep learning new technologies because we're, the industry is still kind of like catching up in terms of what are the tools, what are the technologies that we should be using to solve the data science problem. They have also recognized that data science is not perfect because you can build a model, but there can be big events such as COVID in which cases models are actually not going to do what they're supposed to do. And one of the things that I'm so glad that they recognized and they talked about is how, despite all the progression in the job family, still majority of the data scientists end up spending their time on data cleaning. And they're not great, many great tools that are available to date that are able to do that job. I also really liked that they talked about automated ML. There is a myth in the industry that suggests that automated ML will take away data science job. The article puts it to rest. Automated ML is going to do anything is that it's going to make your life as a data scientist much, much easier. The jobs are not going anywhere. You still need a data scientist to understand how to run these tools. And they also talk about despite the automated ML tooling and the availability, the demand for the data scientist role has not decreased which I think is awesome. And I'm so glad that they actually addressed this. It's something that they didn't mention in their 2012 article, but they wanted to dedicate a section here. And that's their fourth data point is the ethics of data science. Honestly, this is so, so important. I've been working in the industry for almost 10 years now, and I can tell you that ethics and data science go together. You cannot separate the two. Ethics education should be part of all data scientists curriculum 
in the institutions as well as companies that have data-related role employed in the company. So there should be regular trainings for those people, which I 100% agree. So these were the four points that they mentioned. They talked about the ethics, they talked about the changing technologies, they talked about the data scientist relation in other roles, how we have so many roles now than they did in 2012 because the job family has evolved over the years, and the, there are so many degree programs around it. So overall, like this is a very well-written article and they really touched on some important topics in the data science, especially I'm really glad they talked about the automated MLPs because I think that's very, very important to for for this kind of information to come from from a brand like Harvard Business Review, who initially started the conversation, pretty much started the conversation on the data around the data science job family itself. So now to the part: Is the data scientist still the sexiest job of 21st century? In respect to the article, honestly, they touched on it. The first paragraph, they talked about how they called out data scientists to be the sexiest job of 21st century. And they also called out that a lot of people focused, hyper-focused on the word sexy, uh, which is honestly like, what else would you focus on if you put label a job family sexy coming from Harvard Business Review? Like, yes, I would focus on that for sure. The question is data scientists still the sexiest job of 21st century? They did not say anything. They just finished the article. I read it so many times. They finished the article. They did not say anything if it's still the sexy job. They basically wrote these four points, added a lot of details, and they basically left it up to the reader to decide if data scientists is still the sexiest job of 21st century. And in my personal opinion, I don't think a job should be labeled sexy. In a way, I'm glad that they didn't kept emphasizing on the word sexy and they just left it out from the article after mentioning it in the first paragraph. So in short, is data science job family still sexy? I don't know, but is it is still in demand. Yes, is it still exciting? Yes, there's still pain points and problems that need to be solved. Yes, 100% yes. So if the word sexy means attractive and exciting, yes, data science is still pretty attractive and exciting field to be in. There are obviously some pain points and I've talked about them in so many of my videos that I sometimes feel like I'm talking about too many negative things. Given that I have had almost 10 years, of, 10 years of experience in the data science field, I think it's important for me to say it. So I'm not just sitting here and glamorizing the job family uh, in front of all of you. I think it's important to like know all the pros and cons of the job family before somebody decides to uh, enter the field. And I'm so glad that the article that they wrote is balanced and I felt that the 2012 article was kind of imbalanced it was more focused on the pro but to give them some grace I also think like was so much un there was so much unknown that they just they they couldn't have even if they wanted to now we, we have like a decade of data from people working in the data science field and the data science job family itself I think now somebody if now they can actually write an article that is much more balanced and they have a list of pro and cons is data scientist still the sexiest job of 21st century let me know in comments and if you have any thoughts I'll link the article in the description below both of the articles are linked here so you can read the 2012 and 2022 10 years later, wow. If you liked today's video, make sure to give it a thumbs up and subscribe to my channel if you wanna hear more about the data science job family, tech, career, and everything else in between. I will see you in the next video. Have a good one, bye. So I just finished a full work day and I came home, got ready. And my fan is currently off right now because I am, the audio was getting messed up, so. Don't mind me if I start getting sweaty. <laughs> I don't have an air conditioner in my house. Hello, Seattle. Okay, I'm starting to get sweaty. Oh, I'm gonna get up for one minute. Oh. I hope you're having a great day. I'm gonna turn the fan on and <laughs> get some air. All right, I'll talk to you later. Have a good one, bye.